there. 
saying 
he's now in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. So now, skip a couple years. He's been living there for a few years. He is living in a trailer park. He is the pastor of this church. And he becomes engaged to a woman named Sally Gay. Sally has a daughter named Rebecca, who is 24 at the time. Um, and Rebecca has a son named Conway, who is three years old. And so because, you know, that's his fiance's grandson, uh, there were many times where John actually babysat Conway and, and watched the kid. Now, mind you, they don't have any idea of, of his past or anything, right? He's a, a good, wholesome pastor. So, let's skip to Halloween of 2012. Rebecca has gone missing. She went missing on Halloween day. And the community wasn't that big, so everybody knew um, what was going on. And as a pastor, John, you know, is asking his congregation to pray for her return. And, you know, Again, it's his fiance's daughter, and so it's kind of like his family too. So he's like, "Oh, like, let's bring her home. Like, let's pray. Let's pray." And he says, "Quote to his congregation: We need to check closely the seeds we sprout in ourselves. Nothing can be hidden from God." So, needless to say, he should have taken his own advice there. Um, and again. He later admitted that around this time he was having those sexual fantasies about women and women's dead bodies and all that. So, she goes missing. He's praying for her return in the days after. So let's go to that actual Halloween morning. It's early in the day. John is a couple of beers deep. And he goes over to Rebecca's trailer. Um, now, they lived in the same community, so it's not like he had to go far. Um, he goes over to her trailer, lets himself in, and just attacks her. He ended up hitting her in the head repeatedly with a rubber mallet until she was unconscious. He then um, tightened a zip tie around her neck to strangle her and this time he was successful now meanwhile while this is happening Carson I'm sorry his name is Carson his name is Conway Carson Conway is there he's in the next room I don't know if John like picked him up and put him in the next room or if he luckily was just in the next room but her three-year-old son was there um so then John, once she is no longer alive, he dumps her body in a ditch um, about a mile away from the trailer park, like, where there's a bunch of pine trees. It's like, you know, like forest-like, but it's only a mile away from her mobile home, but that's where he dumps her body. He then goes back to the trailer and dresses the boy in his Halloween costume. Like, nothing is weird, nothing out of the ordinary. Gets him ready for Halloween, because he's going to go trick-or-treating. And then he brings the boy to meet uh, his father. I guess that was a known plan that they had, that his dad was going to pick him up and celebrate celebrate Halloween with him, I guess. Um, but, yeah, after killing his mother, he goes, gets the boy dressed in his Halloween costume and takes him to meet his father. Um, so when Rebecca didn't show up for work that day, her co-workers immediately reported her missing because it wasn't like her to not show up for work. Um, so police immediately started to search for her. And again, John is pleading to his congregation to pray for her safe return. Now eventually, you know, the authorities are smart and they know of 
of his history and so they bring John in for questioning and it was only a day later that he admitted to police that he had killed her and he actually took them to the exact location where he dumped her body um, and he told authorities that the murder had been fueled with these pornographic videos that he had been watching that um, had themes of necrophilia Thank you again for all the love that you've gave the true crime.